Welcome to this Inventor 2021 New Features Update webinar. I'm Clint Brown, and over the next few minutes, I'm gonna run you through all of the new features in this really exciting new release. The 2021 release has four major themes. These are performance, modernization, Revit Any, CAD interoperability, and automation. So over the last few releases, the development team has really invested a lot of time in improving performance, and you'll see year on year that um, drawings and graphics and assemblies have gotten faster, as has AnyCAD, and this theme has continued through Inventor 2021. So there's some interesting comparison graphs, and you can see a bunch of different features that have improved and been sped up. And one of the things to note is that the circle um, doesn't show every area that where performance has been improved. So some performance improvements like OpenAssembly aren't on the chart because the benchmark tool that they use doesn't measure this, but there's a few additional slides which will show some of these. If we look at the improved assembly open performance, we can see a chart with the data set, occurrence count, and unique document count, and a comparison between Inventor 2020 and Inventor 2021. And through the range, you can see the lower end at 13.7% improvement, right up to 60.9% improvement. So real improvement there with assembly open performance. Spreadsheet performance. So Microsoft Excel is no longer needed for spreadsheet operations that read or export data. So as a result of this iPart and iAssembly spreadsheet driven operations are two to 20 times faster. But remember that Microsoft Excel is required if you wanna create or edit spreadsheets. This also helps with iLogic. So we now have the default option for iLogic, which is set to internal. But this can be changed back to com. And if we use com, we can do things like write to an embedded spreadsheet or read from an Excel cell, for instance. Let's have a look at the continued command modernization. So with the introduction of the whole tool in 2018, we saw a move to the panel interface and a bunch of tools have now been added to this, like bend part, the split command, combine, decals, copy object, thicken offset, coil, and delete face. And even more exciting is the new dark theme, which is in pre-release. So that means it's still being developed and will, will improve with time. Uh, but for now, Inventor 2021 users have the ability to preview this new dark theme. So what does it look like? Well, here's our light theme. And the dark theme looks something like that. So several parts of the interface have been moved over, like the ribbon, the browser, the context menus, the mini toolbar, and the marking menu. A few things to note, the amber icons are not available with the dark theme, and the color scheme light theme was renamed to light. And it's worth noting that the dark theme is still not available with all add-ins just yet. So let's have a look at dark mode in Inventor 2021. You start out if you pop to tools and application options, on the colors tab, you'll see a couple of changes. So first off, you'll see the UI theme, and we can now choose between the light theme and the, the dark theme. And if we choose, take a note of that amber UI um, tick box there. If we choose the dark theme, you'll see it's in pre-release. And clicking on that, we get told that it is in pre-release, and there's an option to go to the details and going to details will launch a help file online. But if we say continue, it'll go and start launching or loading up the settings for dark mode. So note that under our UI that the amber option is now gone. You'll also see that our in canvas color scheme is now set to dark. And from here we can apply those changes. And after a few seconds, dark mode will be launched in Inventor and it looks really nice, and here you can see a preview. All right, so moving on, um, some options have been changed under our save enhancements, so quite a few things here. First off, there's some new controls, so we can actually choose which files we want to save. There's also a save files in library folders option. What this does is when it's deselected, files in our library paths are not displayed in the save dialog box and are not saved, so that's a nice enhancement. And we can also now multi-select files in our file dialog box. 
And if we have a look at the save state prompt, you can now see uh, the different options we have. So for migration, user edits, API changes, manual update, file resolution changes, mass property updates, and implicit updates. A few other general enhancements. The Configurator 360 add-in is only available from the App Store now. It's no longer included in the Inventor installation with 2021. And there's some changes to the badging. So in previous releases, we used to get every point release shown. These are now available for three major releases plus the current release. All right, so several enhancements were made in the 2020.1 release, uh, browser node renaming, property panel enhancements. Here you can see on the right hand side that we can interact between the model panel and the property panel. There's support for multi-selecting in the browser. My personal favorite though is the ability to use the spell checker in iProperties. All right, moving along, the error handling for projects has been improved so in previous releases there was quite a lot of dialogues that would pop up and it didn't really make much sense to new users so the new dialogue is um, user friendly and even has a link which allow which takes you over to a help file so you can have a look at how to add a search path to an active project for instance right circular measurement enhancement so this is just a bit of housekeeping the old version what would happen is you would get inconsistent uh, naming conventions. So here you'll see if we chose the inside of this hole, we'd get radius, diameter, and total loop length. If we chose the outside edge over here, we'd get diameter, then radius, then length. So in 2020.2, this was tidied up so that we always get diameter followed by radius um, in this naming convention. So diameter, radius, total loop length, area. As you can see, that's just a nice little bit of housekeeping. Right, additional part enhancements. So the display extended information in the browser has been enabled for multiple commands. And you can get to this via your application options or from the browser itself. Just click on the three dots, display preferences and show extended names. The Unwrap features also had some additional love this release. So we can now choose multiple planar holes to be rigid. We can rename the unwrap feature and we can align the results to the model or the x y x z or y z planes sheet metal enhancements so there's a new by reference that's been added to our flange environment and it looks like this so if we click on flange we can now choose by reference and choose an edge as normal but now we can choose a reference so geometry would like to reference the angle to we click on that face over there and you'll see that we can now put in a, a flange that references either the direction of that referenced face so that's one way of using it another way is by using a plane so if we insert a plane on that edge over there we're now able to put in a flange choose our reference And we can now see that our flange is going to extend over and come down in line with our reference. We're also able to edit this and flip that over. And you'll see that the flipped version goes along as well and then in line with our, flat, our reference. So some really nice new options for creating geometry in 2021. Here's another quick example. We can choose an edge and then choose by reference, choose a plane, and that'll just sit along that plane as an example. Okay, minimize has been added to all windows. Uh, we can enable or disable the center point creation for whole features. But one of the nice enhancements here is the reference dimension command. So we can now choose a dimension from a feature. So we can click down and then choose select a feature dimension choose our feature and then actually select that dimension from a feature directly that's a really nice enhancement a preview button's been added to the direct edit mini toolbar which now works with move size scale rotate 
and delete. There's a new return to extrude button, which is part of the breadcrumbs that were brought in with the extrude command and the new panel dialog. And the easiest way to look at this is to actually preview it in the software. Inside of Inventor, if I edit this extrusion, you see that I can click on the sketch and I'm now editing that sketch. So from here, I could click finish sketch, which would take me right out of everything I'm doing, or I could click return to extrude. So I'll just show you the different behavior. That's finish sketch takes me out. If we repeat that, I can now click return to extrude and it'll take me back into this extrusion. Now this behavior is exactly the same as just clicking back on extrusion one over here, but it's a nice familiar workflow for Inventor users using a return. All right, 3D annotations and MBD have had a few updates. So we can now use custom properties in a few of our notes and we can change the annotation plane of an existing 3D annotation or tolerance feature as well. Right, so in addition to that, we now have JT support for JT 10.5, which we can read and write. And we've got support for the import and export of JT files with graphical PMI information as well. Frame generator enhancements. The frame generators had a lot of love in this release. Uh, there's a new property panel, there's presets, there's zoom options, and there's new orientation in Canvas. I'm gonna show you a demo of all of this shortly. There's also a new category filter which was bought in in 2020.2, which meant that you could choose what you were looking for over here before you chose the member further down. And we now have controls with a frame angle manipulator. Then our presets, the new zoom commands, and nice tools for reuse. The trim extend command now works very nicely with curved edges. So you'll see here we can extend to that curved edge and the result is a straight cut. Our notches have been updated as well and we can now update those as we move through. File naming has been enhanced and let's have a look at that in the software. So this is Inventor 2021 and you can see our insert frame dialog box and for reference we'll just look at Inventor 2020 to see how different the interface was. So you'll see our old familiar interface that we had before. And you'll see the trim to frame command is now being called corner joint in 2021, which is far more descriptive and just gives new users a better description of how the tool works. You'll see that we have presets available. So at the moment, there's no presets selected. Now if we look at application options, you'll see that we are now able to save our presets in a specific location and these can be shared with other users as well. We also have file naming defaults as you saw in the PowerPoint. So we can go through and we can set these up to use any of the properties that we choose. So moving along, if we then go and have a look at the a specific member, we can add this as a preset simply by clicking on it, giving it a name, and hitting the tick box and this is then added to our list of presets and we can also remove a preset by hitting delete current and that'll remove it from the list as shown right there there's a property eyedropper and this is great you can choose any member it'll then load that into your frame generator tool we can then add that as a preset if we want and we can then place these members on any edge you also see we get a nice preview of that shape at our tooltip. So of our new tools around the zoom, so it'll actually zoom us in perpendicular to the frame member. And in the old version, you'll remember these dots that we saw around the edge on our preview. Well, now in Inventor, this is actually in a preview and not on that dialog box. So we can click on those points to orientate our frame members. And we can also drag our angle around using the arrow indicator that you see over there. Moves in five degree increments. And again, we can see our different offsets available from this um, arrow. And again, 
we can always type in numbers manually as well. There's a nice new reuse option. So we can click on something like this frame member over here that's already been mitered. And I wanna place it on these four corners. You'll see as I've placed this one though, it's gone in and the mite is on the bottom. So I can just scooch that over and you'll see that the mite is now up top and I can then rotate it around so that it fits. And then I can use the plus over there to add another one. So I can go around to this edge over here. And again, like before, I can get a good orientation. I can flip its direction and I can then rotate that around so that it fits the design. And then moving along, we'll do the same on the last edge over there. And this one's already in the right orientation, so it just needs to be rotated. And I've now reused that mitered component multiple times. Right, let's have a look at trimming to a curved face. So what we do is we use our trim extend, go and choose the faces or the components we want to trim back. And if we then open that frame member up, you can sort of see that it's a straight edge there, but we'll open it up so we can see it on its own. And you see that that is a straight edge. Right next, if we look at the new changes to our notch command, you'll see that we can now edit the notch profile. So we're just gonna go and select some frame members here, blue, and then the yellow bit being the notch tool. And then it's a case of using the basic profile or using a custom profile. So if we choose a custom template, we can then change any of the dimensions for our notch. There's also a help file which takes you to um, information on how to edit that notch profile as well. And then there's our notched profile on the frame. Tolerance analysis has had a few tweaks in this release, but one of the biggest changes is that it's not installed by default. So if you fire up Inventor and you go to the basic install, when you click on tolerance analysis, it'll show that it hasn't been installed. And this is because it's part of your um, product design manufacturing collection entitlement. So you can click on go to my account and this will then let you download the product. Right, positional representations. Um, have had some changes in the 2020.1 point, 20, release. You can now drag the positional reps around uh, to any order. And you, you're also able to multi-select overrides um, or multi-select to remove overrides from your positional reps as well, as you can see down the right-hand corner over there. Design accelerators, there's a new toggle over there which enables the, or disables the sub-assembly structure. And this works with cam, bolted connection and spring components. Again, tube and pipe has some new file naming defaults. So on the right-hand side over here, you can see the new versus the old. And there's a new interface for tube and pipe as well. This is Inventor 2021, and we're looking at the tube and pipe environment and the file naming defaults inside of application options. So yeah, you see we've got a default name called Dan Demo. And if we go and edit the tube and pipe run and create a new root, you'll see that it comes through with Dan Demo in the name. All right, if we add a new root, you'll see that we're now using our properties panel. And you'll see that things are now just a little bit easier than before. Our alternate routes are available from a dropdown and we can merrily move through our model, placing new routes as we go. Add a couple more. Now what you'll notice is that we have a few options available in the panel that used to be available only on a right click. And you really had to know your way around tube and pipe before. So for instance, auto dimension, that doesn't dimension that components over there. We've got our snap settings, so we can choose rotation snap. So as we move through over here, 
We can choose to auto route or not auto route. And then we can choose a bend radius. And in that goes. So in the previous iterations of Tube and Piper, it was quite a lot of work to know your way around the right click menus. And in the new version, it's all in the panel and it's much easier to use as an inventor user. And certainly for new users, it's gonna be much easier to learn. And like with every year, translators get updated as well. So we can pull in and read all of the latest enhancements. And this obviously works very nicely with AnyCAD. The much anticipated Revit to Inventor AnyCAD update has finally arrived. And we now have a really nice workflow between Revit and Inventor. And better than that, we can reference projects locally or in BIM 360. So what does that, what does that mean? Well, effectively an architect could save their model to BIM 360 and that BIM 360 project could be synced to Vault and Inventor users could then be working on vaulted Revit data. Really good. It also works on a saved view directly from the Revit model. And we have enhanced visual fidelity. So in the old versions, when you were importing um, effectively dumb solids, everything would come through as gray or as surfaces. We now get materials as well. Here's Revit and we have the Seaport Civic Center model. And in the middle of that is this owl's nest over here. So what we're setting up now is a collaboration in the cloud. And inside of Inventor, we can bring in the shared Revit architecture model. This is being transferred from BIM 360. And you'll note that we want to reference the model and we want to choose a specific view to work on. So we're going to find our view of the cafe, bring that into Inventor as a referenced model. So now we can see all of the information that's come through from Revit. And in Inventor using Frame Generator, we're going to go and place these frame sections that we want for the awning that we're creating. And we can then go through and finish up our model. A couple of constraints. And we're happy with that. Inside of Revit, someone's going to go in and make some changes. And once those changes are synced, they come through in Inventor straight away. And we can then update our frames. We can run our studies on them in Nastran and we can update all of our drawings and documentation as well. So it's a big change from before. We can then send out our awning as a, a BIM model. In this instance, we're putting in all of our model manufacturer information. I'm gonna export this out as a Revit family file. And in Revit, we can then bring in our component from Inventor and place that into the model. Right, let's look at some drawing enhancements. So in the 2020.3 release, the measure command was introduced to drawing environment and it's been improved with 2021. We can now measure um, on the isometric views, but you can see here that we're picking up diameters and we can pick up angles and distances between faces. And here on the isometric view, we can pick up a distance and we can pick up things like the distance between those two faces and we can see those same faces on a projected orthographic view. Some other enhancements, um, align perpendicular to selected edge. So here you can see we can go across, choose rotated, click on an edge and across that comes parallel, which looks really good. Down the bottom over here, we can now do a parallel diameter with a diameter symbol. So we were able to do this in the old days with, but we needed a, a center line running through the middle. We can now just choose those two edges and we pick up our diameter. There've been some additional changes to the way we can view our views. So in 2020, we could go as part. In 2021, we now have edges as part shaded and edges as reference shaded. All right, drawing productivity. 
There's a new setup that allows us to use enhanced sheet formats. So this basically means we can go in and we can go use a format to place our views for us. And there's a few that come with 2021 out of the box. We'll show you this in a second. And we can get to these by going File New from Create Drawing or from the File menu. There's generally a preview, but there's no preview available unless the drawing sheet was created in Inventor 2021. But there's a migration path you can go through, and it looks like that. So let's look at these new sheet formats. If we go File, New, under Drawing, there's some drop downs, and you'll see we can choose our different sheet formats. So we've got one here with five views with a note. Choose the file we want to use, and it places the views down for you based on that sheet format just a quicker way of creating drawings and it's part of the automation that's gone into this release all right iLogic enhancements so there's several enhancements that have been made to drawing automation inside of iLogic let's have a look at them so in inventor 2021 you can see that it's very easy to name faces we'll see i've got two faces there face one and face two and we can name any geometry just by right clicking and choosing assign name and this will give an edge or a face a name that we can reference later on using the drawing environment. So here we have face one and face two, and inside of a drawing, there's our two faces, and there's a few things we can do. One of them is the new capture current state. So we can use capture current state, and by clicking on these two edges, you'll see that those two edges and that information is now available on my code clipboard. And if I go and create a new rule inside of Inventor, paste that information in. You can see that it's gone and found me the sheet reference and those two faces. There's a new snippets area with drawing information. And if I go and choose linear dimension, for instance, I can place that in. And all I need to do is get rid of the duplicate code and use the new, instead of named geometry there, just use face one and face two that we've just created. So face one comma face two. And when I run that, it'll actually add in a linear dimension for me. If I move that dimension, rerun the rule, that dimension snaps back in place. And if I delete that and run the rule, it'll come back in as well, nice and easy. So in addition to that, we're able to add in other dimensions. We can add in center points and we can add in angular dimensions as well. So there's a whole load of tools that'll make creation of drawings much easier in the 2021 release. So that's it. That is a brief update of all of the new features inside of Inventor 2021. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope that you enjoy using this fantastic new release of Inventor.